Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar. This is the first webinar in our Simple Tools for Print and Packaging series. Today's topic is how to ensure the accuracy of your instrument fleet. Presenting today is Hagen Hurlitz, an application engineer at x Pantone. I'm Robert Grotans, a global technical marketing manager, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. Just a few things to go over before we get started. Due to the number of people that are attending today's webinar, we will keep everyone muted. If you have any questions, please use the questions function on the GoToWebinar panel, and we will have time at the end to answer a few of your questions. Finally, this webinar will be recorded and you'll receive a link so that you can review the webinar at your convenience. So with that, I'll turn it over to Hagen to get things started. Oh, thank you very much, Robert. Welcome everybody to our actually first session for the Simple Tools for Print and Packaging, which is covering today the Net Profiler solution from XWrite. So I will talk a little bit about uh, the Net Profiler, how it works, what it does, and why it's pretty useful to use. So, but let's start with talking about what exactly is the Net Profiler. So the Net Profiler is a blend of a software and a physical color standard from X-Rite. So if you decide to go with the Net Profiler, you're not only getting a license for a software, you also get a physical uh, Munzel color standards, which you can see on the bottom in the, in the middle over here, and you know, a ceramic plaque for the exact. So this includes, like I mentioned before, the software and the calibration tile set and a license valid for one year. So and this software is helping you to ensure the uh, accurate and reliable color measurement from your measurement devices. For, for example, in this little uh, presentation, we stick with the exact. But I think it's also important to mention that um, we can also have different devices calibrated with the net profiler or, or profiled with the net profiler. And the software is always staying the same. So the, the look and the feel of the software is always the same, regardless which instrument is connected to the device, to the software. Nevertheless, the physical standard may differ in process. But once you get your head around this software and how to use it, how to process, it's pretty easy for you to just change the device and go on and take the next uh, net profiler profiling process with this piece of software. But let's talk about why this is a pretty good solution for, for print and packaging customers. So what, what the net profiler is offering you or somebody in, in the print industry is a pretty good solution to provide the, the ability to get a clear and really accurate measurement performance of your spectrophotometer on a regular basis. And this, of course, like I mentioned before, is ensuring you the accurate and reliable color measurement of your device, which is, of course, vital for print and packaging industry. It also enables the standardization of color acceptance criteria and quality across locations. And this is really helpful. So if you're a big converter who has several sites scattered across the world, if you have the net profile enabled for your plant, for your company, you can be pretty sure that the instruments are in good shape. How this exactly is working, I will come to in a minute, but you can, you can just think about it like uh, there's somebody responsible in those huge uh, companies who has an eye on all the instrument, the fleet instrument of the exact, or maybe an SP62. And of course, it allows your digital workflow to become even more effectively. So this means by reducing the variances between the measurement devices, which are caused, caused by, for example, by the age, the wear or the environment by tightening up the, those shifts, which you can see on the bottom, there's a little, little graphic. These shifts are corrected with an algorithm, which is getting your instrument closer back into the spec, which it had, 
when it was brand new. So if you have like 10 different exact devices, which are all different in age and shape. So for example, one is in a pretty good condition, the other one is pretty rough. Then you can plug it into the net profiler and the net profiler tries to bring them together against one standard. So and if you have like 100 instruments, you can be pretty sure that everything is working smoothly with those instruments. And I think the most important topic here is that the net profiler is reducing your cost because it helps you to identify instruments, instruments which are in need of service before uh, they result in a color production which is not really hitting the target. So a really good example is uh, that the print environment, usually it's really busy and there's a lot of going on and sometimes the people are really uh, in trouble and and need to, to fix their machine, everything needs to run, somebody's dropping the instrument. Now, this may cause a problem for your daily work production because let's assume something happened to the instrument. How can you ensure that this is now still working as intended? You don't have the time to send it back in service and you, maybe you don't have a different instrument to, to cross check to see if something happened. So what you can do, which is pretty convenient, you just take your five minutes time, plug it back into the net profiler, do a few readings, and you will get an immense response from the software. Your instrument is okay, or you do have a problem. So you can check immediately, is everything okay? Or maybe should I do something else? Do I need to take action because the instrument has some, some issues? The other thing is, which is also pretty nice, to, good to know. Usually, like I mentioned before, if your instrument is coming right off the box, the drifts are pretty thin, uh, pretty small. So there's not a lot of uh, color measurement drifts going on with brand new instrument. But during the years, your instrument tend to shift a little, little more because of the physical standards, which are the physical parts in the instruments, which are changing as well with, over time. So you can see with the net profiler how the algorithm which is bringing your instrument back in spec is um, are the, those numbers this algorithm is bulking up over the years. So you can see pretty easy and pretty convenient. Do I need to take action and send it to the servers maybe next year, or can I continue to work with the instrument maybe for for several months? So this is giving you a, a good uh, option to plan how to maintain your instrument as well. And this is also, of course, helping you to reduce the cost. So how exactly is the net profiler working? Like I mentioned before, you get a piece of software and the piece of hardware, which is the net profiler tile set with those physical standards. Now for the software side, you install this piece of software locally on your PC. You have two options. Basically, you can go um, with the USB key, which is coming in for free, or you can install the application directly on the PC. You can also already download for free the software and install it anywhere where you like to. And this client software, the Net Profiler software, is just a profiling generation engine with a user interface. So this is doing basically the math of the, of the uh, profile generation generating for your exact device with a user interface, which is pretty easy to use and helping you to get through the process by really guiding you through the whole process. And the report and the certificate of performance are stored locally. So you can go back, grab them, have a look at them, check them again if you like to. They're all saved locally. Now, what else, what else you can see over here on this little slide is on the left side, you have a server also mentioned. So what it does, how the net profiler is working, the net profiler is also connecting to a server. So the main question here is, do I need a internet connectivity the whole time? Well, there's a solution where you only have to have internet connectivity for the first time you start. But nevertheless, it's recommend to have 
the connectivity to the internet because the client can save all your profiles which you're generating to the server as well and all your certificates so for example if your local pc is crashing you don't need to worry because all your data are still stored on our server and this is also pretty handy for example if you have to re reset your exact the software and you don't want to redo the net profiler which you have maybe done yesterday you can just plug it into your net profiler software and say load latest profile and the profile will be coming down from the server directly on the device which is well saving you a lot of time basically the other big advantage for this server connectivity is that you can set up user groups and organize and manage those instruments so if we go back to the example of this huge converter with several sites scattered across the world, then it's completely possible to have one, one of your employees um, responsible to have a look at all the instruments, which condition are they, are, is everything still net profile, do we have a problem somewhere? So this is giving you a lot of uh, process control. If you if you really dig into the server solution as well. And of course, um, like I mentioned before, all your data is stored here as well. So like I mentioned before, if your client get lost, not a big issue because everything is still on the server. Now, we just talked about the exact. We also offer the net profiler for other devices. So for example, the benchtop models like the CI 7000 series also have an option with to go with a net profiler. The CI 60, which is also sometimes used in the print and packaging uh, um, industry, and of course the IntelliTrex, the automated uh, scanning solution. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that the net profiler is also available for many legacy devices. So if you still have a 962, for example, rather old SPM from x right, then you can also buy the net profiler and check with this instrument if everything is, this instrument is still working in spec or if it's in need of service, for example. Or maybe a Spectri from Greta, which can also be used with the net profiler. And I think one really good message at the end of this little short presentation is that we're still developing this net profiler software and we listen really close to the market and really um, try to get back the feedback into our software so for example if you already do use the exact now there's an option implemented which is uh, marked here with this little arrow, red arrow on the bottom you have now the option to run this whole process only in M0, the measurement condition in M0. So if you're a converter and you're not willing, you're not really uh, working with OBAs, you don't have to go through the whole routine with the M1 measurement condition as well. Now you have the option, start a software, check, no UV, pull, M1 measurement condition, and you speed up your profiling uh, process by 50% which is pretty neat and I always recommend to go with the latest version of the net profiler which is giving you always little advantages. So I think that's it for this short presentation and I would now go with the questions. Perfect, thank you Hagen. So yes, we do have some time for a few questions. If you have a question, feel free to drop that in the questions panel right now. While we wait for questions, I am going to pop up another poll uh, just for anyone that might be actually interested in talking to someone additionally. Feel free to respond to that. So I'll give a few moments for questions to come in. One question we received already is, is this software used for the i1 IO device? No, unfortunately, the IO device is not uh, in spec of a net profiler, not supported, no.
Is the IntelliTrack one supported? Um, the first one to be sure. I'm not quite sure on this one. Um, but I think it should be. But I I will check and give you a, a clearer answer on this one because I think it should be, but I'm not quite sure. I can I can forward um this question to you as well, yeah. Hagen, and we can we can follow up with you and make sure that we know. Yep. Yeah. Is there a limit to the number of profiles you can create? Um, yes, actually there is. So for example, if we go back to the exact net profiler option, you have this this, this um, physical sample is valid for one year because everything physical produced uh, tend to shift and change over the time. So there's the first limit. So you can use those cards for one year. If you go with ceramic tiles for the CI, for example, or the bench tops, you can use them for two years because they are more stable than the, the, the physical paper samples. So one year, or you have 26 profile routines on, on the card for the exact. So this means if you decide to go with a, with a monthly routine of profiling your instruments, you can put two exacts on one net profiler card. We'll take two more questions. Here's a good one. Is there, can you use one set of tiles on several instruments or do you need several sets of tiles, for, one for each instrument? Well, this sort of ties to the, to the questions uh, I addressed before. So, um, you can use two exacts on one card, or you can even use 10 exacts on one card. It sort of depends how many profiles, routines you have still left on this card, because like I mentioned before, there are limited to 26. Um, so that's feasible. That's absolutely fine and doable. Um, if you want to put an spectral eye and an exact on an exact profiler card, this will not work because the physical standards for the different devices uh, differ. We'll take one more question for today. Will Net Profiler itself inform you when you need service or lamp change? Yes. So what the the software is doing when you run through the process and you get um, all the tests done, if something is off, the software will prompt you an error message and tell you, okay, there is an, an issue with the instrument. Please send it back to service. Perfect. Thank you. Um, I see a few other very uh, specific questions in here. I'll forward those to you, Hagen, and we'll take those offline and try to get answers for those. Sorry if we didn't get to your question today, but we will wrap up here for today. Again, um, this recording will go out tomorrow. Here are some additional other resources that you might be interested in. So I'd like to say thanks, everyone, for joining, and have a great rest of your day. My pleasure as well. Goodbye, everybody.